Hey, welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Today's video is going to compare the recent Uber and Lyft IPOs. I thought it was interesting to have two high-profile competitors in the ride-sharing space IPO back-to-back, -back, and I was curious to learn more. I thought it'd be fun to do a short video to compare the two. This video will compare some of the key metrics for each, take a quick look at the S1 or IPO prospectus, and also look at the trading history and current valuation. So let's jump into it. So the first thing, we'll take a look at the IPO comparison. I've just done a quick table here that outlines some of the, the key stats for each. Um, so we'll start out with IPO price per share. Lyft went out at $72 a share. Uber went out at $45. The implied market cap, which is obviously the more, more relevant point here, uh, Lyft was valued at $24.3 billion, and Uber was valued at $82.4 billion. In terms of dollars that they raised, Lyft's was a smaller IPO, it raised $2.7 billion, uh, Uber $8.1 billion. And then if we get into some of the actual uh, performance figures of the business, and we'll, and we'll open up their prospectus, each prospectus in a little bit, um, but in terms of monthly active riders, which is a stat that both look at, uh, Lyft has about $19 million, whereas Uber uh, been around a lot longer, or been around longer and more entrenched, has 91 million active riders. In terms of revenue, in 2018, Lyft put up 2.2 billion of revenue, whereas Uber, 11.3. Uh, so Uber, obviously, the larger, larger player in the space right now. Uh, interesting, though, when you look at the revenue growth rates, um, and I just did some back-of-the-envelope math on the revenue kegger uh, between 2016 and 2018, for Lyft, uh, their revenue's been growing at 150% uh, per year over the, that two-year period, and Uber's been growing at 71% over that two-year period. So Uber's got more revenue, $11 billion, uh, but it's been growing at a slower rate, although 70% is nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. I didn't look at net loss. There was some, or net income. Uh, there was a lot of uh, adjustments that needed to be made uh, so I just took the adjusted EBITDA figure that, that each presented in their prospectus. So Lyft, both of these companies are losing money, uh, probably no surprise to you. Uh, adjusted EBITDA for Lyft is almost negative a billion dollars, 0.9 billion. And Uber, adjusted EBITDA, negative 1.8 billion. So despite it being much larger from a revenue perspective, the, the losses are higher. And then just for fun, the pages in the prospectus, uh, Lyft crushing Uber, with over a thousand pages in its S1, uh, whereas Uber has 522. Although I think in one of their original S1 filings, they had 3,000 uh, plus pages. So there's a quick comparison of the IPOs. Now let's just take a look at the prospectus itself. So we'll jump into Uber first. So here's the Uber prospectus, uh, and we'll start off with page seven, which just takes a look, and here we go. Page seven. We can't. We don't have it all on the same page here, but it just outlines the history of the business and the number of trips. And so Uber's done 10 billion plus trips in its history. Uh, the next thing I want to show is a couple of interesting charts. So if we go to page 125, you can see the monthly active users over time. So going back to Q1 2016, 19 million active users to 91 million active users in Q1 2018. The other one that I want to point out is core platform contribution margin. And we'll just come down to it here. Here we go. So this is a stat that uh, Uber tracks and points out to investors. And it's essentially their, their profit margin on their core platform revenue. So ride sharing and Uber Eats primarily. And you can see here, and we won't dive into the whys or potential reasons, but they do talk about this being a key metric for them. And they also talk about core platform contribution margin here, expected to remain negative in the near term due to, among other factors, competition in the ride sharing space and planned investments in Uber Eats based on long-term growth expectations. So did have positive contribution mar margins, dipped negative and they're telling you that we expect it to remain negative for the foreseeable future competition and investment in Uber Eats 
And I guess the one other thing I'd say here is short short window of metrics to compare, but it has seemed to be a pretty volatile metric, right? It's gone from negative 8% up to positive 18, back down to negative 3. So that's the, uh, con the core platform contribution margin. And the last one that I wanted to point out for Uber was the adjusted EBITDA. So you can see here, here's their quarterly adjusted EBITDA um, over the last couple of years. Uh, adjusted EBITDA has declined in recent periods primarily due to reduced core platform contribution profit. Okay, yeah. And investments in our other bet segment. We expect adjusted EBITDA losses to increase in the future as we continue to invest in our platform offerings and other technology programs. So they're telling you that adjusted EBITDA historically we had negative 1.8 billion. Uh, expect that figure to uh, be even lower uh, or increasingly negative going forward. Risk factors for Uber and we'll just look at two or three of them. Page 49, there's probably 30 or 40 pages of risk factors. So if you if you were considering an investment in, in Uber, this is you'd want to at least have a look at, at, at the risk factors and make sure that you're aware of them. Uh, the first one is this fairly standard non-profitable risk factor and for companies like Uber and Lyft, they're just coming out and telling you we have incurred significant losses since inception, including in the United States and other major markets. We expect our operating expenses to increase significantly in the foreseeable future, and we may not achieve profitability. So this is a business that is not profitable. Number two, uh, page 50. I guess I could have just gone to the next page. Um, this is an interesting one. Our business would be adversely affected if drivers were classified as employees instead of independent contractors. Uh, and so... Obviously, the way that Uber works today is anyone who's on the platform as a driver is an independent contractor. Um, no benefits really need to be provided by Uber. It's, uh, it's sort of an eat what you kill type of a, a model. And the more ride sharing uh, that a driver takes on, the more money he or she will make. Um, but there's no other benefits or other potential uh, liabilities that Uber's on the hook for. So that's an interesting risk um, to take into account account and then the last one I'll show you is page 55 and this one is you know obvious when you think about the business model but interesting just to see it written out here and it's the, the whole concept around well, what if it, what if something really unfortunate happens during a ride share something violent uh, something criminal inappropriate or dangerous and not only could that lead to reputational uh, liability for for uber it could also lead to legal potential legal liability and we have seen a few of these cases and they without going on into all the detail uh, but they talk about a few of, of the examples below so another risk factor that you'd want to take into consideration if looking if you're looking at an investment in the stock so that's it for uber lyft let's jump into their prospectus here so on page 83 they give you a similar, a similar page that Uber does and goes through their history. Uh, so Uber was at 10 billion plus rides. Uh, Lyft is at 1 billion plus. So relatively newer business, um, and they just go through their history here from from 2012 launch. One stat that I wanted to point out for Lyft was revenue as a percentage of bookings, which is page 89. There we are. So bookings, think about bookings as if you're taking a Uber or Lyft ride, it's the amount that you pay. There would be potentially some adjustments that they talk about here, but roughly it's the amount that the consumer pays. Uh, Lyft cares about uh, that, but they also care about what percentage of those bookings uh, turn into revenue for them. So what do they charge? And you can see here, and I'll just scroll down a little bit further. So revenue as a percentage of bookings historically, Pretty nice trend upwards, um, but it's in that sort of 20 to 28 percent. Uh, so if you want to think round numbers, if you're booking a ride with Lyft, about 25 percent of what you're paying uh, goes to Lyft for the platform. 
and the remaining 75% goes to the driver. And I'm sure that's a complete oversimplification, uh, but that's one of the key metrics that I wanted to point out here. Uh, risk factors, uh, well, I won't go into th them here. They're on page 27. We'll just click there um, so you can see them. Uh, from page 27 to 68 is full of risk factors. So again, if you were to consider an investment, this would be a great starting place to just make sure that you've thought through all the potential ways things could go wrong. Um, and, and that's just a quick look at the Lyft prospectus. So we'll jump back now and take a look at the trading and the valuation. So Lyft went public a little bit earlier. I think their first trading day was uh, March 29th. Uber's more recent, I think early May. Um, Lyft went public at $72 a share. It's now at 57. So it hasn't been, it, it got off to a good start initially. Uh, but hasn't been a great uh, first few months. Now there's been a lot of other things happening in the market um, overall. So we won't get into that. Um, it, Uber, on the other hand, went out at 45 and uh, through the month of May, it's now settled in at about 41.50. Uh, so again, a little bit lower than its IPO price. From a valuation perspective, you can see below, I've just put in the, the market caps for each. So Lyft, the implied uh, market cap is now 17 billion. And uh, the enterprise value is about 14 billion. Uh, each of them have net cash. So Lyft has some net cash on the balance sheet. And uh, if you look at from a valuation perspective, uh, EB to revenue, and there's a lot of shortcomings in this metric. Uh, but it's one data point that you can look at. It's 6.4 times for Lyft based on 2018 uh, revenue. <clears throat> and then Uber, uh, Uber on the other hand, market cap of 70 billion based on the current trading price, enterprise value of about 60 billion. Again, they've got a net cash position of around 10 billion there. And EV to revenue on 2018 is 5.3 times. So again, uh, when you look at it, Uber's the more entrenched player, the larger player, about five times the revenue uh, of, of Lyft, um, but Lyft's growth rate over the last few years has been higher than Uber's. So when you put all those together, the market's saying we're willing to pay a little bit more per dollar of revenue for Lyft. We're willing to pay 6.4 times uh, versus 5.3 for Uber. So the bottom line, We've got two new big tech IPOs, add them up to the tally. For both, top line growth rates are high, but so are losses. Uh, Lyft is playing catch up, still smaller than Uber, with only about a fifth of the revenue, but a higher two year growth rate, 150% versus 70% for Uber. Neither entity is profitable, so fundamental valuation analysis is difficult. You could, in theory, do a DCF. Uh, and project out to future profitability and discount back to, to present. There's a lot of assumptions that would be uh, involved in that. Um, otherwise, <clears throat> excuse me, you can look at unit economics or other valuation data points like we've, we've shown briefly here, like EV to revenue. Um, and, and that's it for the comparison. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I was more curious than anything to take a look at these IPOs. Uh, let me know what you think about the valuation of both of these companies and their future prospects. Stay tuned for more content, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your